Hi everyone, it's Vanessa and I'm back for my second part of my catch-up wrap-up and this is going to focus on four books as well. The first one I wanted to talk about is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, which is a booktube darling that everybody loves that has been on my TBR for ages and I just now finally got to it. Celeste Ng writes in a literary MFA way, which I really enjoyed. It's descriptive and it really weaves emotion and time well because we kind of bounce back and forth. And I definitely felt like I understood these people's psyches and like the broken lives that they all led. For me though, I have to say this did not live up to the hype and I think it was because it was very dark dark and very somber and very resigned. To me the characters never really felt 3D and they kind of felt like they were just like symbols and put in the story to prove points. The issues that they are dealing with for sure are very real and true to life and to people's experiences but the characters to me felt like they had already given up at the first page and I felt zero agency from all of them. I wanted the characters to stick up for themselves or rebel a little bit so there were some parts that I really liked, like the writing, and then other parts that I didn't really like, like the characters and how unbelievable I found a lot of their actions. But that's just my opinion because I feel like maybe it has to do with the time period that they are living in or the race that they are, and those are just experiences that I'm not aware of and I didn't. Uh, lead myself. The next book I want to talk about is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Another book I was disappointed by. There's going to be a lot of disappointment in this video, I think. I really wanted to read this because they're turning it into an HBO show with Amy Adams that's directed by the director from Big Little Lies, produced by the Get Out people. So I read this book. I wasn't dismayed by like the violence or the creepy or edgy moments, which some people have problems with on Goodreads reviews, even though some of those moments I did feel were kind of gratuitous. Um, but that's not really what I had problems with. If you can hear, that's my dog breathing into the couch. Why? But to me, this book just had characters and moments that were completely unbelievable and things that I could not see happening. The characters felt like caricatures at points, especially the main character uh, half-sister. The way that she acts as a 13 year old girl in this like messed up town, small town, the kinds of like substances that they consume, the way she talks to her parents and other authoritative figures in town just seemed like things that were ridiculous. I also felt like the whole book, though it's framed as a mystery, it's kind of like a, a gothic book that you know what's going to happen at the end and I did predict everything that, that happens in the end. I think Gillian Flynn set it up in a way where it's easy for you to predict um, and that's kind of her point. I still didn't really care for the pacing and the way we got there and I just felt like a lot of it didn't really gel with me in the way the story was told, paced, and the characters. But it did really feel like a debut to me and this book came out in 2006 so there were definitely some things where I, I felt like the time had changed and the way we think of things have changed. I'll just wait around for the HBO series and I think it'll be much better. The next book that I read is What Girls Are Made Of and I picked this book up because it was kind of touted as a completely honest telling of a teenage girl's life and this would include shaving your legs and why you do it, um, menstruation, masturbation, dating boys and becoming obsessed with boys um, in a way where you like you don't care about anything else, sex, and even abortion in this book is really depicted in an honest and true way that really normalizes and doesn't um, hold back the reality of what it is like. I really thought the first half of this book was great and I felt like I was in our main character Nina's head. She felt like a girl who's still discovering who she is, who because of that is having discussions about what it's like to be female and to have a female body. But I think after all of that, the book turned into such a pessimistic take on what being a teenage girl is that I felt did a disservice to Nina and like what this book could have accomplished. It really didn't offer any hope about being a teenage girl. You know, being a teenager is definitely difficult and sometimes you do believe in extremes and you agree with your mother telling you that nobody loves anybody unconditionally. I could see where Nina was coming from there, but it also made me think like Nina has no support system, Nina has no laughter, no friendship, no realizations, no solidarity with anybody about her life and her experience. I think this book really suffered because we could have sifted through all of these issues that I was mentioning and had Nina understand that there were moments of hope in everybody's life and that there's going to be a future after her teenage them, things are going to get better and she's going to be able to find people who she can trust and who can love her unconditionally and who can support her in a way that is healthy for her. I definitely think it's a good book 
if you want to expose teenage girls in the way that a lot of maybe Sarah Dessen books did for me when I was younger, but in definitely more conservative ways um, to depict all of the things that our bodies do go through. And I also really like the writing. It's just sad because I wanted Nina to have some hope and some support towards the end of the book. I don't know if she really learned anything other than the fact that being a teenage girl is horrible. And the last book that I want to talk about is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. This is a book about Michelle McNamara's love of true crime and her search for the East Area Rapist slash turned Golden State Killer. We get to hear her own personal fascination with this case, all the things that she has discovered by talking to people and finding information. And we also get to hear from the survivors and the victims of the East Area Rapist slash Golden State Killer. We also hear about the investigators and the things that they have thought and believed over 20 years of trying to catch this guy. Unfortunately, McNamara passed away before the Golden State Killer was caught and also before she was able to finish writing this book. And because of that, this book only really supposes different ideas of how this could have happened and like who it might be and uses different writers to help finish the book in a way that it could feel a little bit disorganized and disruptive to the narrative flow of it. So I didn't think that worked as successfully for me and I also think that I made the bad decision of listening to this on audiobook and I thought, you know, I listen to nonfiction all the time on audiobooks. This is going to be great on audio and I've listened to true crime on audio too and I've enjoyed it. But this I felt like really needed to be read in print or needed to be read in audiobooks slash print pairing because I felt like I missed a lot of things and there was also no maps for me to look at which the book does have so I felt like I missed out on some of those things. McNamara really had a lot of the right ideas about how to solve this case and like strategies to do that. It was ultimately some of these ideas that were the same reasons why the Golden State Killer was just caught and I thought that was really awesome because you could tell she really had like her finger on the pulse of how to solve this case and she was so close. This like sharp object I think will work for me better as an HBO series. This is going to become a docu-series. It will lay out everything so much better and we'll get to see images of people and, you know, settings better too, which I think will work in my favor. So I'm looking forward to that docu-series. And that's it for me and this wrap-up. Thanks so much for watching. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.